<laughs> Sadly, this is sort of like the bad news to end it on, uh, I hate to say, like I did with the previous NWA TNA uh, review that we did. 2003, and you alluded to this, I don't know if it was this episode, the last NWA one, 2003 is the year that I personally remember being a horrible, horrible year for the deaths of a lot of wrestlers. And <clears throat> I'm going to give you a few that sort of bookend the NWA TNA pay-per-view uh, that we were talking about before, a few weeks beforehand and afterwards. One person you won't probably know is a guy called Kent Walton, but anyone of a certain age, anyone basically older than me who watched wrestling, he was the legendary commentator of World of Sport for 33 years, I think. Started in 1955. He passed away of cancer at August 24th. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going now. Then, here's one for you. The Great Antonio. If you remember that name, he's most famous for getting his head kicked in by Antonio Inoki when he stopped uh, when he stopped uh, cooperating in that yes. match, which is incredible. Yes. Uh, Stu Hart passes away October 16th. And we're going to get to the um, most tragic of both of them. Road Warrior Hawk dies the 19th of October. But because you were mm. talking about uh, battles with your battles with OxyContin, and this won't have obviously <coughs> gone unnoticed, is Anthony Pitbull to Durante passes away 25th yeah. of September at the age of, my age, in fact, 36. Um, and his wife. And his wife. Mm, uh, yes. Yet yeah, leaving the children alone home for several days, which is just yes, a horrible, horrible story as well. I think at this point, uh, we don't need to dwell on that anymore. I think it'd be nice to end the show on a nice story about Anthony Durante, who obviously wrestled many, many times with oh the God, pit bulls yeah. and everything, but some pit bull stories to end us on. Well, you know, Anthony was just a good friend. And I, I people ask me this, and I really do believe they ask me, like, what, what do I think was my best match in my career <clears throat> or, you know, my best time in the business? And I really feel that working with Anthony was that time. Uh, I was, I'd fallen into the franchise character comfortably, it fit like a glove. And uh, he was so strong. Uh, just a powerful, powerful man that he was able to throw my big ass around at 253 like I was a sack of potatoes. And so because he so trusted me that like like a lot of times you go to the ring like hesitant because you're not sure if this guy's going to work along with you or put the same effort in. And I never had to worry that with Anthony. Uh, so like when he'd be pressing me over his head and throwing me, if you watch closely, I'm upside down taking the bump i'd scream beat your chest and he'd start beating his chest it was just really really comfortable working with him so i started getting to the point like because we were working so closely together where i would just jag with him a little bit every night you know just see how far i could push him and yank his chain a bit you know and uh you know he, he i don't know if you noticed or not but anthony's bald you know, he's, we, he's not we, as well we, we like to say follic follicularly challenged or something yes like that. yes yes he's not as follicularly gifted as some, <laughs> of the, some of us but he uh uh so he comes down to the room and we're talking i you know pop in his restaurant like, hey you gotta brush like a bar real quick my hair start digging into his bag and he look up and go like, <laughs> like and every time i did like five or six times and he started looking at him like i'm like dude you're, you're bald you don't have a brush in there it's <laughs> But he, uh, he just really a good guy, man. Uh, you know, I, I, that it's become cliche. I say that so often, but, uh, you know, they, they, you know, my understanding is he and Gary had, you know, some really interesting jobs along the way. <laughs> I never saw that side of those guys. Uh, both of them great guys. But when I heard the story about Anthony and there was a connection to his wife because his wife was a Brazilian girl that had worked who for a guy who had started as my driver and then would later become <clears throat> the head of merchandising in ECW, uh, Damian Farron, who himself had passed away uh, six years ago, seven years ago. No, that's crazy. But he, um, she had danced at a club that he managed. And so she started bringing him, her, he started bringing her to shows and uh, they fell in love and, you know, and just a really beautiful girl. And uh, they, you know, got married, had these kids. And then, you know, a couple of years later, you hear this story and it's just so ghastly. Uh, 
you know, that again, like I, I, it breaks my heart that Anthony or his wife didn't know that they could reach out to me or somebody else, uh, you know, to, to get that help. And so that's why I said, like what I said a few minutes ago that, you know, they're on the outward appearance, Anthony didn't need anything from anybody, big, powerful guy, beautiful wife, beautiful family. And sometimes, as you find out, there's a lot of times when people have that big, shiny house on the hill and you go look in the windows and there's no furniture. Uh, you know, there's an emptiness there. And uh, he, when I heard that and then I heard about the kids, thank God they were of the age. They won't remember that. But, uh, you know, that's that's about as horrific as it gets. You know, like when you start talking about that that kind of thing. And it was, you know, getting so close to home. I mean, this was like just working its way closer and closer. Um, you know, that, like, you know, all the guys we lost at ECW. And, you know, because there really was a family aspect to that, that it uh, it just started taking on like new parameter. And, uh, you know, the, well, yeah, no, you know, enough said about that. It, it, it's good dude. All these guys gone way too soon. And why I was given the blessing of being able to survive it, I, I don't know, but I won't look that gift horse in the mouth. Uh, and, you know, hope to be able to be a, 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 some voice of re, reassurance to people out there who are in that position. Because it is incredibly hopeless. It's depressing. It's demoralizing, <clears throat> especially for people that have been successful at things. And, uh, you know, it's just... Give me a plan. Tell me, do A, B, C, D, and I can get on that plan and do it. It's uh, it's a lot more convoluted than that. And uh, what's what's off? There's often something at work that they're anesthetizing themselves to, and a lot of times, as I found out, there's probably things that you're not even aware of cognizantly that that you're contributing to. And uh, it wasn't until I had a, 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 a counselor tell me, like, well, it sounds to me like you're, you know trying to do this and trying to do that and saving marriage that ain't salvageable and just went down this washing list. And my first gut reaction was like, fuck you. You don't know me. You, don't, you can't say that stuff. And then I, so I'm driving home and I'm like, oh, he's right on that. He's right on that. He's right. On that. Well, hell he's right on everything. And that just opened my eyes a little bit to it. Like to, to you know, to, to see what it was. And so like to see like with Anthony and, and again, like how many different people we've lost both from ECW and the other federations. It's it, there was a genocide time in this business, mm. and I, the the good thing to come out of that is, from what I understand, like I'm talking to Taz and his son and other younger guys in the business, that this current generation seems to have, by and large, learned from that. Thank God, uh, because it would it would be even more depressing than it already is if it were to be all those people died at these super young ages, and there not be a moral to that story. So. You know, fortunately there is, and, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, just every time you talk about these guys, you know, you, it, it takes you back to a place. I, I wish I could step into a time machine and go back to when they were still here because you miss interacting with those guys and asking for the brush and things like that. <laughs> that you know, that's, it just made the, you know, made the night go by a little bit faster. Uh, but good dude. And his wife was a beautiful lady and, uh, sad. Yeah. I remember I've, I've spoke to Gary Wolf a couple of times, uh, interviewed him once. And I remember mm. saying, almost euphemistically, because I like to broach these subjects, you know, with kid gloves. And I said, uh, mm. you know, I was I was heard that in the ECW locker room that you and Anthony were the guys who could get you, uh, you, you know, you, you, providers in that kind of sense. And Gary, went, oh yeah, we could get you anything. He was just like completely out there, like, yeah. oh, don't worry, you know, you, we're <laughs> yeah. a one stop yeah. shop, baby. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. He's, you know, I think he probably tell you the same thing. You know, being that he was in that world. Um, you know, they're, they're, as you can imagine, it's probably not all the guys that survived that world, you know, and coming through unscathed. Uh, but I, I, you know, he and I had a long talk about, uh, uh, you know, after the, this happened to Anthony and, and the other people. And, and, you know, we were great friends to this day. And when we see each other, we can pick that conversation right up. Same type of thing. Like, you know, he, he had been in that world, submersed in that world, came into wrestling and, you know, the, but he's still standing. You know, he's still here. And, uh, you know, for the double whammy, not just, you know, that they, they could get you whatever they wanted, but they, the stuff that they were doing, uh, you know, it's, 
it's but by the grace of God, right? Mm-hmm. That, that 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 they're still here, and I'm I'm glad that I still have enough of those friends that I can still sit down and talk to similar experiences and experience the same stuff with. But it's also like a bittersweet time to us when we talk about it. Like you know, when me and Freddie are hacked together, you know, all of us we get to Jerry, uh, and 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 this will in, invariably come up, and I I think it makes our remaining friendships even stronger because it's like there there aren't many of us left uh, or as many as there should be. And uh, a realization that we got to experience something incredibly unique in wrestling that rarely existed before that hasn't existed since. And I don't think we all give it enough of, you know, we're all appreciative and thankful for it. Don't get me wrong there. I don't think we take time to slow down and think towards, hey, thank you. I appreciate that I had that, that that opportunity because it was an amazing amount of fun. And, uh, you know, if it hadn't been for that fun that we had then and all those great matches and angles and all the things that we did in that building, you know, if a guy named Anthony Durante and his wife had died from an overdose and I'd never been to wrestling and never knew those guys, that wouldn't, you know, kids are blurring the paper, move on to the next page and the next thing. I, I got the good fortune of being able to work with, you know, meet him, work with him, uh, know his wife and know what kind of people they were. And I can tell you this without hesitation. It, 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 I think it would underscore like what I said earlier about the the hopelessness of being in that situation. Both of them love their kids dearly um, and would have wanted both of their parents to have survived. So the fact that they were willing to, you know, in any other semblance of their life thing. And Hey, this ain't a good idea. You and I both doing this together and kids being here unsupervised uh, at that very young age. Uh, it, you know, the, somewhere they, in the haze of that, they had lost sight of that. And, you know, I, I can't think of anything that any parent on the planet would find to be more important than that. And yet that's where they were. So if you're out there, know somebody out there, please seek, seek the help, talk to them, do whatever you have to do to get it because it's a, that's a one-way street that will end in a really, really bad place. Hmm. 